Today, I'm going to rank every Red Dead Redemption 2 main story mission in a tier list, starting from the worst missions, going all the way up to the best missions. 99% of my viewers are unsubscribed, so if you'd like to see more content like this, subscribe as we be posting tier lists almost every single day. In 80th place, I've got Welcome to the New World from Chapter 5. I actually hate this mission because you have to walk for like five minutes just to do anything in this mission. And then also you're kind of just stuck on an island with the most unbearable gang members. And they also have Dutch, who's getting pretty unbearable himself at this point. Hercule does rescue the boys and the mission does get a little bit better from there. But I hate doing the walk all the way back so much that this has to go in last place. It's like a 10 minute walk if you count everything that you have to do in this mission. So I just hate it so much. So it definitely has to be in last place. And going in last place, it also has to be going into the F tier. In 79th place, I've got Exit Pursued by a Bruise Ego. This is from chapter two. This one is an interesting kind of mission. It's just kind of a full on tutorial for crafting, using your camp, using the stables and hunting legendary animals all in one. It tries to do way too much and it's a pretty boring mission overall besides, you know, a little bit of camaraderie with Hosea and hanging out with him, doing some fun stuff with him. But those moments are kind of fun, but this mission really just shows the bad side of Rockstar's mission structures in general and just isn't a fun mission to do because there's just teaching you the game is just saying oh this is how you do this this is how you do that and that's the whole mission so this one also has to go into f tier in 78th place i've got the course of true love 3 this one's from chapter 3 and i feel like the whole setup with penelope being a boss woman and joining up with the other protesters who want women to be able to vote but there's not really anything else that goes on with this mission and this mission in general is just really boring nothing interesting at all happens throughout the mission you just drive the wagon and go on horseback and there's nothing actually like driving the mission besides like gain bow away from his cousins and I just think this is a mission that doesn't affect the story and doesn't really affect, like it's not fun on its own, right? So I don't know, I don't really like it. And it's also the dialogue is centered around two characters who aren't really a part of the big story, which is kind of weird. I feel like Penelope and Bo really weren't used at all well in this story. I just think overall, they're kind of these side characters that don't really help Arthur at all, but kind of do it in the same way. And I just think overall, this mission has no stakes and it's not fun. So it has to also go into F tier. In 77th place, I've got Country Pursuits from Chapter 4. I love the beginning of this mission where Dutch kind of basically shuts down Hosea because his ego was too bruised by Angelo Bronte setting him up. And Jose is kind of clearly trying to save the game while Dutch is going to continue to be reckless. But I just hate this mission so much because of the gameplay. I hate the swamp so much. I just think overall walking in the swamp for like... I don't know, 10 minutes. I feel like this mission takes so long, but maybe it's because I'm walking in the swamp the entire time. I feel like it just is so bad. And just overall, the, the gator isn't really as scary as you think it is because you don't actually see the gator at all. And like, it's kind of like this thing in the background, but I don't know. I don't really like this mission at all. And I hate walking around the swamp. So I think this one has to go into D tier. In fifth place, I've got Savagery Unleashed. This one's in chapter five in Guarma. This mission is just so boring and generic. It's just kind of a sneaking around mission and then a really basic gunfight. There's no character investment in any of the characters there because you're in and out of Guarma so quick and you don't really get to know any of these people. And as Arthur, I don't care about any of them except actually trying to get off the island. So this mission just is really boring in general, but at least there's kind of a little bit of an interesting gameplay part where you actually get to shoot people and do something interesting, but Overall, this mission sucks, so it's going to have to go into D tier. In 75th place, I've got the Aftermath of Genesis. This one is from Chapter 1. I think overall, this mission is pretty boring. While it does introduce you to Charles and kind of understand his reasons for the gang, shooting and hunting the deer, isn't very interesting in that mission. And I think while you do get to learn a lot more about Charles and kind of start your real friendship with him, because Arthur and Charles don't have a friendship actually in the game before this, I don't think this mission is interesting at all. You also kind of get to learn a little bit about Pearson and meet Uncle, but the mission itself is just really long and kind of just used to showcase the hunting mechanics in Red Dead Redemption 2. So I'm also going to have to put this one into D tier. In 74th place, I've got The Joys of Civilization. This one is in Chapter 4. And this mission does a good job of illustrating who Bronte is in Sandini, someone he don't really want to mess with and don't talk about because he kind of controls everyone in the city, especially the police. But I don't like the actual mission at all. I hate running after the kids. Every single time I just feel like I can't catch these guys. And they're so annoying to catch because he just eggs you on the whole time. I know that's kind of the whole point of the mission, but I don't like playing this mission again and again. Similar to Country Pursuits because I don't like the actual mechanics of the mission. And yeah, I don't know. It's a fun mission to hate though. And I do love hating these guys kids and hating this mission in general so i don't know it's kind of fun in that way but this definitely is a d-tier mission to me in 73rd place i've got the course of true love 2 
This one's in chapter three, and I think this mission is pretty boring. And while you do get introduced to both Penelope and Beau Gray, I don't really like any of these characters. And I, while I say I am the biggest Penelope Braithwaite in Beau Gray hater, some other people do like them, so you might like this mission a little bit more. But it's just kind of a whole fetch mission associated with these two that don't really take a big part in the story. And it kind of just gets you introduced to the characters without telling a lot about their backstories, beside for them kind of being like this Romeo and Juliet and these two families that hate each other. I just think overall it's just really boring as this kind of a fetch mission that also doesn't do anything to add to the story because these two aren't really used that well in the story in my opinion. So this one's also going to have to go into D tier. In 72nd place, I've got Who Is Without Sin. This one's in chapter two. This mission is kind of just an introduction to the stop witness mechanic and introduces you to poker. If the poker game is kind of fun and is actually like counted in the mission because you don't have to do it, it's technically optional. It can be solid because I feel like poker can always kind of be fun in Red Dead Redemption 2. But overall, this mission is really just kind of boring. You just learn about the stop witness mechanic. It doesn't really build that much character for Arthur. For Reverend, it does a little bit where you like can really tell he's a drunk here. But it's not really that interesting in general. So this one also is going to have to go into D tier. In 71st place, I've got Dear Uncle Tacitus. This one's in chapter 5. And while I do love the music and the stand unshaken, that whole part, especially when you're on the ride back, it's just kind of a boring ride back into Shady Bell while the music is amazing. You're just spamming X. You're just spamming the X button and it's just going for you. So there's not really much you're doing on your own self. And it does just stretch a little bit too much compared to something like Arthur's Last Ride where there are like those cutscenes in between. There's a little bit more like funness coming back. But I think it is okay. It does have a nice lead into the Pinkertons rating Lake, And I love the song. So I don't know. It's, it's okay, but it has to go into D tier just because it's so boring. In 70th place, I've got brothers and sisters, one and all. This one's in chapter four and absolutely nothing really happens in this mission, but kind of seeing what Edith Downs has gotten up to and sister Calderone praising Arthur does help Arthur's development into a good person, but this one's just kind of technically a stranger mission, but shoehorned into the actual story. So this one's also gonna have to go into D because not really much goes down in the actual story part of it in this mission. In 69th place, I've got friends in very low places. This one's in chapter three, and the mission itself is okay with getting introduced to Alden and this kind of stagecoach tips thing. But I really think Trelawney stealing the show with his flamboyance is pretty cool, but this should not be a mission. It really is just like a companion mission with all these other people. And this being a story mission, just introducing you to the, the stagecoach tips thing. I don't know. It doesn't really... It's not really that interesting and just overall, I feel like this is a really boring mission and that's why it kind of has to go into D tier. In 68th place, I've got Eastward Bound. This one's in chapter one. I think there is a lot of really solid dialogue between Jose and Arthur. It kind of sets up their whole bond and they just have a lot of really good camaraderie. But the mission itself is extremely boring though, as you literally just drive the wagon for five minutes while kind of learning about Hosea and Arthur's bond and a little bit more about Charles' upbringing. And there is a really solid foreshadowing of the Wapiti which does make this mission a little better and gives you a good example of their plight. But I just think overall, this one's really boring. So it has to go into C tier. In 67th place, I've got Help a Brother Out. This one's in chapter four. And I love the insights between Dorkins and Arthur and Arthur's kind of relationship with Dutch. I love that kind of insight there. And I like the foreshadowing into Guarma. And the mission does a good job of showing Arthur's kind of good side, but I think the mission isn't interesting at all in its own right, and it's really short, so I think this one also has to go into C tier. There's not really much going on here besides kind of getting started with that kind of stranger mission style main story mission. In 66th place, I've got In the Course of True Love 5. This one's in chapter six, and again, I don't care about saving Bo and Penelope, so I don't like this mission too much. It's kind of fun to fight against Bo's cousins, but the rest of the mission is pretty generic, especially when you're shooting off the train, and just like, oh, there's a bunch of random Braithwaites that are trying to stop you. It's not that fun, and I, it's kind of nice to see that Arthur helped them escape, but even in this mission, I feel like he doesn't really like Penelope or Bo, and he just is kind of doing it because he's about to die and he wants to help these people, and it seems like he's begrudgingly doing it at least. So, I don't know. It's not that interesting, and to me, just because both Arthur and I seem to not like Penelope and Bo, this one has to go in C tier. In 65th place, I've got Paradise Mercifully Departed. This one's from Chapter 5, and I think there's a pretty generic gunfight all the way up to Fusar when you do get that kind of cool Mexican standoff. But the rest of the mission is just really boring. Hell Hath No Fury, the previous mission where you fight off the 
warship really feels like it wraps up Guarma, and this mission is just kind of shoehorned in to wrap up Fusar, who's like one of the most underdeveloped characters in the entire game. I just think Guarma in general is really underdeveloped, and this mission really shows that. And I just think killing Fusar eventually is like the most boring death in the entire game. You don't care at all about Fusar, and you just want to get off the island. So this one has to go into C tier as well. In 64th place, I've got Honor Amongst Thieves from Chapter 6. This mission is extremely generic and pretty boring. It just kind of acts as an extension of archaeology for beginners. While it is okay to kind of get some development for Captain Monroe before the mission where he kind of starts getting shot at, I don't think this mission is anything special. I don't really like going on. It's like you go on and you steal the thing, and it's like that's the whole mission. And especially when you're trying to get a gold medal. It's like the whole point is to go on it and not get seen. So there's not really much interesting going on. I feel like it's just kind of like a quick fetch request, but also it's just like a stranger thing or like one of those random interactions where it's like, oh, can you do this for me? And you do it for him. And that's kind of the whole thing. So this one also has to go into C tier. In 63rd place, I've got Enter Pursued by Memory. This one's from Chapter 1, and it does a great job of introducing John and Arthur's old brother and younger brother dynamic and the strained relationship between them. You also get to see a good amount of Javier's character, but the mission itself holds it back with killing the wolves being pretty boring, and the game forces you to go through this overly long parkour section to just teach you kind of mechanics. So this one's also going to have to go into C tier. In 62nd place, I've got Outlaws from the West, also from Chapter 1. This one introduces the player to Sadie, Dutch, Micah, and Arthur. The mission itself isn't that interesting at all with the fight with the O'Driscoll being kind of the best part and kind of the only interesting part where you actually like punch the O'Driscoll and all that. And it's more kind of about introducing the player to mechanics in each of the characters than actually being a fun mission. But it does do its job, and it is kind of interesting in its own way, especially when you meet Sadie. So... This one's also going to have to go into C tier, but it does a good job for what it's supposed to do. In 61st place, I've got a kind and benevolent despot. This one's from chapter 5, and I love this mission because you get to see Dutch's true colors when he kills the old woman and kind of talks about Abigail and John being a rat. And the beginning of the mission is just so boring with you have this long shimmy and you have this long walk to get to the place where they're keeping Javier. But I do like how they blew up the factory and the gunfight afterwards is pretty solid, but it's just so long and pretty boring for what it, it has to be. So I don't know. It's also, it's on Guarma, so it definitely takes it down a few notches. But this one's going to also have to go into C tier. In 60th place, I've got Horse Flesh for Dinner. It's in Chapter 3, and I think it's an okay mission. I think it really builds on the feud between the Braithwaites and the Greys, but I think it's much less consequential compared to the burning of the Greys' tobacco fields. Also, the fact that it's kind of such an easy mission takes a little bit away from the fun, and I do like the foresight in the beginning of the mission where Gray alludes to the fact that the Vanderlyn gang are kind of playing both sides and they shouldn't, and also does introduce you to the, the new fence. But I just think overall, this mission really doesn't work as well as the Greys burning of the tobacco field one and I think it just has to go in C tier because it's really not as consequential at all and it doesn't build the story as well as the other one does so yeah in 59th place I've got money lending in other sins 3 this one's in chapter 2 and beating up Thomas Downs is a little bit boring and generic for a mission but I think of because of how important this mission is to Red Dead Redemption 2 I think this one has to go a little bit higher than the actual like gameplay itself warrants is seen as the tuberculosis in beating up Thomas Downs in this one it's kind of the root of all of Arthur's problems and kind of what you know turns him and redeems him into this great man he is by the end of the game so while this mission is pretty boring gameplay wise I think the rest of the mission and how it affects affects Arthur as a whole really works to make it a little bit better of a mission and better in the entire story. So this one's going to have to go into C tier as well. In 58th place, I've got No, No, and Thrice No. This one's in Chapter 4, and I think this is a solid mission. It's fun to go and pick up Anthony Foreman, but with the rest of the story, it doesn't really work as well. You don't get that big of an investment into Tilly before this point, unless you're like really spending a lot of time around camp and like hanging out with Tilly. And I just think besides breaking into the house and killing everyone inside to save Tilly, the mission isn't all that interesting, and it's also pretty short. So I just think overall, it doesn't, it isn't, amazing to me and because it doesn't really work with the story i feel like again this is a mission that doesn't really need to be there in the main story but is something nice to be like okay tilly is a character i want to hang out with and tilly's a nice character in the game it just doesn't really do anything to you know further the story but it is an okay mission so it's gonna have to go into c tier 
In 57, the place we've got We Loved Once and True. Three, this one's from chapter two. And this mission is kind of deep with Arthur's talking with the Chelonian master, Arthur and Jamie's conversation, and Arthur's monologue at the end. We get introduced to both Jamie and Mary, two solid characters in my opinion. They're both okay. And the horse ride is a little long with the bad horse, does get a little boring. But I just kind of love all the monologues and all the dialogue in this actual mission because that kind of builds a lot more especially when you do actually talk to the Chelonian master and Jamie you kind of see how people get sucked up into these cults and you know what they are actually doing in there so I do like that part and while it doesn't really play a big role in the whole story I think you know being with Mary and that whole thing does really kind of change Arthur's character and especially how he views Abigail and John and how they push off so this one's going to have to go into the very bottom of B tier. In 56th place, I've got American Distillation. This one's from Chapter 3. Lee Gray really is in full display for this one, at least at the beginning. I think him being drunk really kind of proved to Dutch that Lemoyne was a state with a bunch of backward rednecks that he could exploit. Bill, again, kind of takes a backseat in this mission, but at least he's a part of this mission. I think this mission also kind of proves that Dutch is kind of going through this midlife crisis where he's always kind of reaching for bigger and better things to satisfy himself, and he'll never be satisfied throughout the entire game. The mission itself, though, is pretty generic and, you know, isn't that all that interesting, but you do get to see a lot of the more subtle things in the dialogue and all that. So, I think this one also has to go into B tier. It's nothing special as a mission, but it's pretty solid nonetheless. In 55th place, I've got Polite Society Valentine Style. This one's from Chapter 2, and it's actually quite fun to have a mission with all the girls and Uncle the Parasite, and having two different choices that introduce you to the honor system. I feel like both really work well. It's also quite a short mission, but it does pack a solid amount of content into a short time without any unnecessary long rides. And while it is kind of like a tutorial mission i feel like it really works well on how it introduces you each things in the tutorial so this one's also gonna have to go into b tier in 54th place i've got further questions of female suffrages from chapter three i really like how in this mission you're kind of introduced to sadie more as a character and it kind of sets the tone for a lot of the stuff she gets into later especially her being a loose cannon who hates o'driscoll's and kind of just hates all these gang members you realize that she's really trigger happy i mean she shot the lemoyne guy like immediately will often cause a lot more trouble for everyone else but at least she can hold her own with a gun. You also get introduced a little bit to the Lemoyne Raiders and see that they kind of think they own all of Lemoyne and want to, you know, take a little bit of part in everything. So this one has to go into B tier. It doesn't really push the story that much forward, but it kind of sets the scene for a lot of stuff that happens later. In 53rd place, I've got Magicians for Sport from Chapter 3. Searching for T Trelawney itself in this mission is kind of fun, with each step kind of reminding me of a treasure hunt, or you can, you know, role play as a detective if you want. I don't know if you want to do that, but it is kind of a lot of horseback riding and capturing the bounty hunters in the cornfields is really not fun at all. This is another one I kind of hate because I'm always in there and it takes so long to catch these damn fucking bounty hunters. I hate it so much. And there's also not really that much emotional weight besides bounty hunters being on their trail and kind of Charles and Arthur's bond is growing and you save Trelawney. But I feel like at this point, he's not really that interesting of a character. And I feel like Find Night with Debauchery really introduced to me him as a good character. So this one also has to go into B tier. In 52nd place, I've got Preaching Forgiveness as He Went. This one's from Chapter 3. It's a cool, kind of fun mission to do with Lenny, one of your like better friends in the game. And you see a lot of good camaraderie between the two of them. But this one's just a pretty generic shootout. There's not really much going on besides kind of taking over the Lemoyne Raiders hideout. And it's just, yeah, I don't know. There's not really much going on here. It's just a pretty generic gunfight. And there's not really much advancing the story besides it kind of coming back to you later when you do eventually move into Shady Bell. But overall, there's not really that much going on in this mission besides the gunfight. So this one's also going to have to go into B tier. In 51st place, I've got Miss Sadie Adler, Widow. This one's from Chapter 6. The mission itself, again, similar to the last one, it's just a really generic gunfight, but it's nice to kind of fin finally finish off the rest of the O'Driscolls. Sadie gets her revenge for them killing her husband after she killed like 400 O'Driscolls for one of them killing her husband. But Sadie does have a nice moment where she kind of kills the fat O'Driscoll. But I think overall, there's not much driving this one. So this one's also going to have to go into B tier. In 50th place, I've got a gilded cage from chapter four. The mission itself 
isn't that interesting at all. I mean, you're just walking around a party, but I feel like it sets up the rest of chapter four really well with setting up the poker game that you rob, the trolley robbing, the bank robbing, getting involved with Eagle Flies and Rain's Fall, and it introduces Alberto Fusar also to the story, setting up chapter five. It also just shows how different the Vanderlyn gang is from the rest of city folk. And it also really does a lot to like introduce how Bronte is kind of setting them up the entire time where Bronte is kind of insulting them behind their backs. And, you know, Dutch isn't really taking it right. But overall, this this is a really interesting story mission, but it's not that fun itself and the gameplay is pretty boring. So this one's also going to have to go into B tier. In 49th place, I've got the New South, the starting mission for Chapter 3. I love the foreshadowing in this mission where Hosea tells Dutch. He's been a little bit more wild recently, but Dutch kind of just tells him off and says, Arthur, you you got to follow me. And the mission itself isn't really that interesting, but it does do a good job of setting up the Greys and Braithwaite. also works because Dutch uses this as an intro into the Greys family while he tells Hosea to work his magic on the Braithwaite. You clearly see how the Greys own the town while the Braithwaite own the rest of the county. It's not really that interesting, but it is good to see kind of how everything else gets set up after that. And there is at least a little bit more fun in the gameplay than some of these other missions. So this one's also going to have to go into B tier. In 48th place, I've got Angelo Bronte, a man of honor from chapter four. I think it's a solid mission, but the grave robbing and escaping from the law isn't all that interesting. And I feel like that kind of feels separated from actually rescuing Jack back, even though like that's the whole reason they got Jack back. But I feel like they're two different things and they don't really feel all that consequential to each other. So I don't know. It's interesting, but... I do really love the Bronte scene at the beginning because he reveals his true intentions to Dutch, how he's, you know, just doesn't like the, the Vanderlyn gang and just thinks they smell of shit, you know, they do. But before realizing he can use the Vanderlyn gang to his advantage and then he eventually turns his thing, turns his view into a nice one. So this one's also going to have to go into B tier. I really like Bronte's use in it, but it's not that interesting of a mission itself. In 47th place, I've got Spines of America from chapter two. I really like this mission, especially if you have Hosea trick the homeowners into his little trap, looting the house itself isn't all that fun, but if you do find the money in the chimney, you can kind of get it over with quick. It's a pretty short mission, but I think it's pretty enjoyable while it lasts, especially when you do have Hosea trick everyone, because if you get a, you know, a nice view on that, it's just really funny how he does it, and you can really see Hosea is the scam master, and it also introduces you to the stagecoach fence, which can be very useful. I feel like a lot of people use the stagecoach fence, and I just think overall it's a pretty solid mission. It does some good introduction to Seamus himself. So I don't know. I like it, and it's also going to have to go into B tier. In 46th place, I've got Fatherhood and Other Dreams from Chapter 4. This is a solid mission. It gives you really good insight on Mary and Arthur's actual relationship, and I love how it echoes very similarly to Abigail and John's eventual trip down into Blackwater. It also gives the player a good ending to Mary and Arthur's relationship, ending them off on good terms, even if it really doesn't feel like that because Mary's like, you know, what if you come with me, Arthur? And then he's like, oh, no, I can't. But you know, it does give the player hope that Arthur could be with Mary until you do see his tuberculosis diagnosis pretty soon. But I don't know. I, I really like it. And I feel like it does end off their relationship on a pretty good note. So this one's also going to have to go into B tier. In 45th place, I've got the full Do Not Seek Absolution mission. This one's in Chapter 6, and I think this mission is great for storytelling because Arthur got the chance to patch up probably one of his biggest mistakes in his whole life and tried to help the two people that he had hurt the most. He gave them some of his kind of last money and wanted them to live a new life away from him. And I feel like it really wraps up the whole down saga where, you know, at first he you know, ruin their life, but then he eventually kind of saves their life after ruining it. So I don't know. I really like that part. And I feel like it just works well to show Arthur's redemption as a whole. And it's going to have to go in B tier because the gameplay really holds it back. In 44th place, I've got a Fisher of Men from Chapter 2. Getting introduced to Milton, kind of feeling some of that danger put on your back makes his mission very important in terms of the story. The actual fishing and hanging out with Jack isn't really all that interesting, but it does play a part into kind of John and Arthur's relationship and eventually liking Jack when you do play as John. So that does bring the mission up a little bit, but again, the gameplay during this mission isn't really all that interesting, so it has to go into B tier. In 43rd place, I've got a Rage Unleashed from Chapter 6. This mission shows that Dutch is becoming more and more like Micah. He's using the Native Americans for his own purpose because he's leading Eagle Flies down a path that will eventually destroy the whole Wapiti tribe, similar to how Micah uses people until they're of no use. And it doesn't really matter how Micah uses them because as long as he survives, that's all he cares about. But 
I think the mission itself is pretty boring. You just kind of save the horses and knock out some army soldiers. And I just think overall, it doesn't add that much to the whole story, but it does kind of kick off the whole Eagle Flies and Dutch saga, which I think is pretty interesting. And it really just shows how Dutch just doesn't care about anyone but himself at this point. 42nd place, I've got the Delights of Van Horn from Chapter 6. I love how Micah kind of takes Arthur's spot here. He's the one giving out orders that Dutch gave. But I think the mission itself is really generic with a pretty boring and easy robbing of the stagecoach and a generic ride back to the camp. You can also clearly see at this point that sides are starting to divide in camp and Bill will pick Micah side as he seems to be one of the only people that actually defends Micah. He's like, oh, you can't say that. You're getting soft, Morgan. And again, Micah asserts himself as Dutch as second in command and tells Arthur to help John, showing that Arthur's TB has kind of taken a hit on his confidence and Dutch's confidence in him as he's kind of allowing Micah to boss him around, even though he should be taking Arthur's side. But overall, I think this one is a B-tier mission. It does add a little bit to the story, but it's not that interesting in its own right. And then hanging out with Bill is always a slog. In 41st place, I've got old friends from chapter one. I like the raid on the O'Driscoll camp. It's pretty fun to just execute a bunch of O'Driscolls. Again, nice raid in there. And I feel like it does build up a little bit to the end of the first chapter. But I think this mission is just way too long. It's extremely long with a lot of writing writing and basic exposition and i feel like also at this point in the story there's not really you're not really invested in killing the o'driscolls so i feel like it's not as satisfying as some of the later times when you're just gunning down o'driscolls but you also do get introduced to kieran i feel like there's a nice set of banter between arthur and him on the ride back to camp where arthur's like oh my god we're gonna do all this bad stuff to you and kind of plays it up a little bit more than actually is even though they do do some bad things to kieran in general so this one has to go in B tier. I definitely like this mission, but it's nothing that special. In 40th place, I've got Blessed Be the Peacemakers from Chapter 3. This mission is clearly seen as a bad thing by majority of the gang, but they kind of risk themselves even though they know it could be a trap. Arthur is actually pretty badass actually escaping the O'Driscolls. I think that part, of, that part of the mission is fun, but this mission clearly shows that Dutch is listening more to Micah than Jose or Arthur because his ideals are more in line with Dutch's. I just think overall, this mission isn't all that fun. It's a lot of cutscenes and not a lot of actual gameplay. And I feel like when there is gameplay, besides sneaking out of the O'Driscolls camp, it isn't all that amazing. So this one also has to go into B tier. In 39th place, I've got Americans at Rest from Chapter 2. The melee here is pretty fun, and beating up Tommy also is a fun time, but the mission here is extremely short. You get a nice bit of the vibe of Valentine as this kind of solid Western-themed town, and meet both Trelawney and Thomas Downs. Overall, it's a pretty solid mission, but it's just way too short to go any higher than B tier, so it's definitely going to have to go into B tier. In 38th place, I've got Pain a Social Call from Chapter 2. This mission is pretty fun. You get to go out with John and Bill and lead an assault on the O'Driscoll hideout. It's pretty fun to just shoot at the O'Driscolls at this point. On the way, you do get to learn a little bit about Kieran and kind of the differences between the O'Driscolls and the Vanderlyn. And he says they're a lot more similar than they are. But I don't think this mission is all that interesting. It does drag on a little bit during the ride there and the mission itself when you actually get to shoot things. It's like, I feel like that's pretty short and there's not really much to build on there so i think this one also has to go into b tier it's just a pretty generic gunfight with at least a little bit of an actual mission in 37th place i've got american fathers from chapter four i like this mission a lot working with eagle flies for the first time is pretty fun and i feel like both him and arthur work well together the stealth portion of the mission is also pretty cool but I wish there was a way you could actually sneak out of the oil factory without getting noticed. And the showdown isn't all that interesting because you can literally just run by all these bullets. But I do really like the part when the actual oil explosion goes off. I feel like that's probably one of the most interesting and fun parts of the mission. Like, I know they wanted that to go down, but I feel like, why couldn't you just sneak out and be like, oh, eagle flies, let's blow up all everything. So I feel like that could have been a little better. But Either way, this is still a solid mission and, you know, getting to know Eagle Fly is pretty cool. So this one's definitely going to have to go into B tier. In 36th place, I've got Hell Hath No Fury from Chapter 5. This mission feels like a really good send-off for the Guarma chapter as a whole. While there's little character development from anyone, I love the gunfight. I just think using the cannon and going against the huge warship is probably one of the best interesting 
most interesting part of the game, even if it doesn't really feel like that same Red Dead Redemption part. It just feels like the most grand part of the entire game, and I think it's probably one of the most interesting parts. So this one's also going to have to go into B tier. That warship and the gunfight there is just the best part easily. In 35th place, I've got Fleeting Joy from Chapter 5. This mission is pretty great. It shows some great development from Sadie, turning her into one of the gun-slinging men in the gang, but I feel like with a little bit more compassion. I also love the the, the fact that this mission kind of catches you off guard as you expect at least a little bit more peace and quiet before going on into another fight. The fight itself is pretty generic and even though you do get on that Maxim gun, that Gatling gun and shoot everyone up and like I feel like that part is fun, the rest of the mission is just pretty generic gunfight and there's not that much development from anyone other than Sadie in this mission so this one's also going to have to go into A tier. In 34th place, I've got a fork in the road from chapter five. This mission really shows how dire Arthur's situation is because you kind of know he's sick at this point, but the fact that he really collapses in the middle of the street really makes that condition apparent and you kind of realize that he has tuberculosis and it's gonna die pretty soon. So while this mission is extremely impactful for the story and really turns Arthur into the good man he is by the end of the game, the mission itself is really short and kind of uninteresting from a game perspective, but because this is the moment that really changes Arthur and flips him as a character, I feel like this one has to go in A tier no matter what. In 33rd place, I've got the Battle of Shady Bell it, from Chapter 3. Even though the mission itself isn't that interesting, it builds a lot of people's characters. John seems like he's more willing to get out of the life and is growing disillusioned with Dutch and Hosea's plans. You also see that Cornwall and Milton are definitely still on their tail. I mean, they find the Clemens Point camp and Milton will continue to follow them until he captures Dutch himself. And it kind of shows that the whole gang is a cult as they won't turn in Dutch here. They're all actually following Dutch's rule and Dutch is the big guy he is. So I don't know, that's pretty interesting. And you also see the split between Dutch and Molly where Molly will then go on to talk to Milton. And the mill mission just shows that Dutch wants to get that one big score and then ditch the, the country overseas because he says they only need a little bit of time at Shady Bell. In 32nd place, I've got the first shall be the last from chapter two. This mission is pretty fun. You get a nice Trelawney con of the bounty hunters, and then you get a nice assault up through the canyon. Javier and Charles are both some solid characters in the, this mission, and they have a nice dynamic between the two of them. And then you do get to meet and rescue Sean, the most charismatic member of the game. And I feel like you, this really kind of turns a point where they start doing bigger and better stuff with Sean back here. I just love Sean's character as a whole. And I feel like when you actually do rescue him, you're like, oh my God, this guy's one of the best members of the entire gang and he's been missing this entire time. Now I can't imagine a time where you don't have Sean. So I don't know, I really love this mission and I just love Sean as a character. So this one's definitely gonna have to go into A tier. In 31st place, I've got Archaeology for Beginners from Chapter 6. This one has great development on Arthur as a character, as Arthur sees rain falls, not as a weak man like Eagle Flies does, but as a strong leader doing the best for his tribe. At this point, you kind of realize that he doesn't just want to follow Dutch's plans and wants to get all the people he actually loves out of this vicious cycle of violence. But the mission itself isn't really that interesting in itself. You just go down, you sneak around, you get the Chinupa, from the camp and then you bring it back. I mean, it's it's not that interesting there, but I feel like the fact that it has a very big impact on Arthur as a character really has to put it into this A tier bracket. In 30th place, I've got A Quiet Time from Chapter 2. This is just a really chaotic and fun mission for the first time, but it does lose a little bit of its charm each time you play through it. The first time I played through it, I was like, oh my god, this is an S tier mission, but then the more times you play through it, it loses a little bit of its charm because you like know all the spots, but the first time it's just magical because you don't know where Lenny was, and you actually kind of felt like Arthur for a little bit. You're a little sauced out when he is, but the, the mission's kind of nice and short, but I think it is one of the most fun missions and just kind of seeing everything especially for the first time in there is just super fun so this one definitely has to go in a tier just because of how chaotic and amazing this mission is in general in 29th place i've got the advertising the american art from chapter three this mission to me is extremely important not only do you get introduced to Catherine braithwaite kind of the antagonist of chapter three you can tell she's kind of this really cunning woman the mission itself and escaping with hosea is also pretty fun i think the insight it gives you into dutch and hosea's mindset of robbing both families shows how they both think they're smarter than both families and kind of finesse them and just how they're overconfident with that 
It also shows the slow downfall of Dutch as money becomes the only thing on his mind. And all he cares about is money and getting out of, you know, the whole the country as a whole. So I don't know. This one shows a lot of stuff. And I think it definitely has to go into A tier. I also just love the the like stupid brother that Arthur plays here because it's really funny. In 28th place, I've got an American pastoral scene from chapter two. This mission just really reinforces that Mike is a loose cannon and likes to do very dangerous things, even if they can get him killed. It's also just pretty fun robbing the wagon and like having Micah mess with you. I feel like people really underrate how like funny of a character Micah is because he just always is trolling Arthur. And I mean, while you play as Arthur, the character is like, you don't really want to get trolled by Micah, but Micah is just so funny in that way. And I feel like the assault at the end with the O'Driscolls to protect the money also just reinforces how many people the O'Driscolls have and how like powerful they are and how powerful just Micah and Arthur as gunslingers because they fight them all off. Just overall, I really love this mission and I just kind of like hanging out with Micah at least at this point where you don't really hate him. He's just kind of this guy that messes with you at this point. So this one definitely has to go into A tier. In 27th place, I've got Horsemen Apocalypse from Chapter 4. This mission really gets carried by the shock factor, in my opinion. First, you talk to Sh Sadie, kind of foreshadowing her turn in this mission to becoming the absolute badass woman she is. But then you get to talk to Dutch about the real plans before Kieran's body is right on the back of a horse. And then you get to see Mary Beth just screaming and be like, oh my god, it's Kieran. And then I just love how the game totally subverts your expectations before rolling in an untimely death by another Vanderlyn gang member. This one isn't really as memorable. I feel like the shock factor really is like, oh my God, Kieran's head, he's holding his head instead of like, oh, Kieran died. I feel like it was a little bit more shock factor than like, oh, Kieran died. But overall, this mission does really well. And even though the gunfight itself is kind of generic and boring, it really brings back the O'Driscolls in as a powerful antagonist force. And that's why I have to put this one into A tier. In 26th place, I've got Icarus and Friends from Chapter 6. This mission is great from going in that hot air balloon, getting these great views of the world, which is one of the most unique things in all of Red Dead Redemption 2, to that shootout in the hot air balloon, to then Arturo dying right in front of Arthur, which is just another great shock here. Sadie also doesn't really have that much character development in this mission, and it really just emphasizes the fact that she just wants to kill all the O'Driscolls, and she will not stop until, until she does, but it kind of just pisses you off as the character that Sadie does all this because she really ruins this whole mission because she gets you as Arthur into a gunfight and she kills our, our boy Arturo. So I don't know. Overall, that part is a little bad, but I do really just love the whole hot air balloon thing. I think it's the most unique part of the entire game. So this one also has to go into A tier. In 25th place, I've got Blessed Are the Meek from Chapter 2. This mission really shows Micah's true colors. You don't really know him as a character until here, and you can see why Arthur doesn't like him before this mission, but this one just shines a light on how explosive, unpredictable, and violent he is when he goes into Skinny's house and shoots him and his wife up. Besides that, I feel, I feel like this is still a fun mission, like breaking Micah out and then doing a shootout with the whole town, and the fact that this is just such a memeable moment where it's like oh this is the rat you want to leave him in here and i feel like this is the part where you wish you just left him in here but i mean of course the game doesn't want you to do that because they want to play you this amazing story just overall i feel like this is just a great mission because of that because it's a one you love to hate but at the same time it's also a pretty fun mission in its own right so this one definitely has to go into a tier in 24th place, I've got Pouring Forth Oil from Chapter 2. This is a really fire mission. I love actually going on the way to the train with Sean and John just messing with each other. Just the whole camaraderie of the group. Robbing the passengers is also kind of fun. And it introduces you to the robbing train mechanic. Then the law turns up and the resulting shootout's fun. Also kind of getting introduced to Lemoyne. It's pretty solid in this mission. And just overall, there are a couple parts, but I feel like this one is just a pretty generic like train robbery, but... I feel like because it's like the first time you're really robbing a passenger train, I feel like it really elevates the experience here and doing it with probably the three most interesting members of the gang at this point with Charles, John, and Sean. I feel like it's really fun in that, right? So this one's definitely going to have to go into A tier. In 23rd place, I've got an honest mistake from chapter three. I just love this mission because you don't really expect it to be this big of a mission at the beginning. You just kind of expect it to be a generic regular stagecoach robbing to go down with like, of course, a couple of hitches. Like, of course, it had to be a bigger gunfight. But the whole thing that like you have to hide in the little barn and then you have to do all the stuff with uncle. It's just really fun. And I feel like everyone 
attacking uncle and bill for doing all the dumb stuff it's really funny to me so i don't know i i just love this mission it's so fun to do it with like two of the stupidest people in the entire gang with uncle and bill and you also see that cornwall can kind of fund this infinite supply of men and everyone doesn't think you should be messing with him i also like this like two-part setup of the mission and yeah that also bill ruins the mission for everyone i also like that part so this one definitely has to go into a tier in 22nd place, I've got a fine night of debauchery from Chapter 4. This mission is one of my personal favorites because it's just so different from a lot of the other ones. I love the cheating aspect during poker, and I wish there's either one of these high-stake poker games or a cheating poker outfit. Two things which are in Red Dead Redemption 1, doing the mission with Trelawney and his usual shenanigans. It's also pretty fun. I feel like overall this has to be one of the missions, best missions just gameplay-wise, but there's really no development of any of the characters, so it has to go a little lower. But I just think overall it's pretty fun, and you just get a nice, like, fun gameplay mission to do. So this one definitely has to go into A tier for me. In 21st place, I've got the fine art of conversation from Chapter 6. It's a solid ending for Trelawney. You can go back to his family and have a solid goodbye from Arthur. The mission itself is pretty generic, but I like how Arthur overhears the people talking about Captain Monroe. It's also kind of funny that Arthur and Charles just kind of solo an entire army regiment. I feel like they, they should just be destroying everyone here. But at the end of the mission, you also either have a great conversation with Sister Calderon about who Arthur should be in life, or a good conversation with Reverend Swanson about saving the people he loves. Either way, this mission has some great development for Arthur. It shows how hopeless the situation is between the army and the Wapiti. So I think this one definitely has to go into A tier. I just love the, the development between Arthur and Sister Calderon or Arthur and Reverend Swanson because it shows that Reverend Swanson has kind of cleaned up his act and is wanting to go into bigger and better things here. In 20th place, I've got the Bridge to Nowhere from Chapter 6. The mission itself is pretty generic and boring, but the moments with John and Arthur bonding are just great. This mission means a lot to the storyline with John realizing that maybe he has to leave the gang and just start his own life, start anew somewhere else with Abigail and Jack. I mean, he has a family. And it's clear at this point, they're both really disillusioned with Dutch's teachings, especially as he's kind of reneged himself from those and principles. And this mission allows them to really both realize what they need to do. John needs to get his family out. And Arthur basically needs to risk the rest of his life to allow the people like John and the rest of his friends to, you know, be able to survive when he's not going to be able to. So just overall, I really love this mission. And it just builds a lot of character development between the two of them really brings back that brotherly bond they had. And I don't know, I just really love this mission. So this one definitely has to go into a tier in 19th place i've got goodbye dear friend also from chapter six i love seeing colmo driscoll swing i think that this is one of the best deaths in the entire game with colm being oh so confident until he sees arthur dutch and sadie all the same time pointing guns at him basically and saying oh you're gonna die here boy and then he began to kind of really fear his death. And you can also see a lot of the friction coming out between Dutch and Arthur, with them almost arguing nonstop during this mission. It's like every time it's like Arthur saying, oh, Dutch, you're going to do this bad thing. And Dutch is like, I'm not going to do that, Arthur. <laughs> but you do see Sadie go off the rails again for one last time, killing the rest of the Driscolls, which is just really annoying here. It's like, bro, just let them go. They're going to be nothing without Como Driscoll. And I think the mission itself isn't all that interesting gameplay wise, but it is fun to see Como Driscoll swing. In 18th place, I've got Favored Sons, also from Chapter 6. This mission is really one that shows Dutch's character as a whole. At this point, he's kind of latched on to Micah's philosophy of being a survivor. He doesn't care about Eagle Flies or any of the other Native Americans' well-beings, and he doesn't even really care about Arthur's that much. Like, he clearly does, but he also wants to use Arthur, you know, to do all these things and help everyone get to Tahiti at this point, even though that's really not his plan. But the mission itself isn't all that interesting and with the generic gunfight against the army, but there is a really cool scene where they're backed off against the cliff. And I think it's a really interesting mission because the last time Dutch and Arthur really team up, I think it has an interesting way to end with Dutch rescuing Arthur from the water after he kind of got them both into that bad situation because he kept on wanting to loot these army men when they didn't have anything. So this one definitely has to go in A tier. Love this mission. In 17th place, I've got Who the Hell is Leviticus Cornwall. This one's from Chapter 1, and I like how Hosea warns Dutch about Cornwall. There's some nice foreshadowing there. Also really like this mission. It's pretty action-packed with fighting your way down the train, then to the armored car. The fight with the train conductor is cool as well. This is a really good introduction into all of what Red Dead Redemption 2 is, and it keeps the pace of the train robbery pretty fast compared to the first couple of missions. This one really just sets up the rest of the game, and I feel like it does that really well, so it definitely has to go into A tier. 
In 16th place, I've got Revenge is this dish best served eaten from chapter four. This mission has really great development for Dutch. John and Arthur finally see that Dutch is willing to do whatever it takes to get to Tahiti or the metaphorical Tahiti. And he will do things that will put the rest of the gang into even more danger than they're already in. The mission itself is pretty solid though, with catching Bronte and running away from the police being pretty fun. But I think that Dutch's ideology really goes out of control in this mission. I feel like that's what makes it amazing. The rest of the mission, is just kind of a generic like siege mission, gunfight mission that a lot of the rest of the game has. But I just love the end where Dutch puts Bronte's face into the water and then he eventually gets eaten. So I don't know, I love that part. And I think overall, this is a great mission. Definitely has to go into A tier. In 15th place, I've got Sodom back to Gamora from chapter three. Going back to Valentine and just robbing the bank there is just amazing. And robbing the bank with three characters. You don't really get that much development and much praise from other members of the gang. It's pretty fun. Bill actually has a plan go well for once. I actually like him a lot more because of this mission. Besides the actual mission itself being really fun and the gunfight being pretty fun as well, Rockstar throws in Arthur going back to Mrs. Down, which really just ruins the mood of the rest of the mission and just kind of puts in a really depressing tone, which works really well, and it just puts into perspective how bad Strauss's business actually is. So this one definitely has to go into A tier. I just love how they contrast the mission with these two, like one side is really upbeat, and the other side is kind of really depressing. So it's just a great mission in general. Definitely has to be A tier. In 14th place, I've got A Strange Kindness from Chapter 2. This mission is just perfect because it's the first mission where Arthur realizes he can like make money and you know fulfill himself by doing good things. The family eventually does pay Arthur for rescuing their father, and he realizes that good things can make money, and that that family eventually does rescue him during one of his tuberculosis spats. And I think that's just amazing where the foreshadowing in this game where you have one family saves him, and then he gets to save the family at the same time it's just it's so great in that way and i just think this starts arthur's change into the kind of good man he is at the end of the game it also shows how like charles is the one who actually kind of helps in a lot of ways to influence arthur into being a good person so this one definitely has to go into a tier at the very very top in 13th place, I've got Urban Pleasures from Chapter 4. This mission really puts Dutch in his place. Dutch thinks he's the big guy in town, and Bronte kicks him down a notch, which forces Dutch's hand to try and kill Bronte to eventually regain back his honor. Besides that, this mission is really fun. You get to rob the station, have a really interesting shootout on the trolley, try to find a way out of Saint Denis, and then you have another shootout on the wagon. And I think there's also some great foreshadowing at the end of the mission where Arthur kind of doubts Hosea's plan to rob the bank, and then Dutch is like, now's the best time to rob the bank it really does some nice foreshadowing on how that's definitely going to go wrong because there's going to be so many more people there but i think just overall there's so many unique things in this mission and the fact that there's like four different parts to it has to put it in the bottom of s tier in 12th place, I've got the fine joys of tobacco from chapter three. I love this mission. You really get to see Sean on full display with all of his wit, which makes his death in the next couple of missions even more shocking when you finally get to it. You also can see Hosea trying to butter up Catherine Braithwaite. And when it seems like it works, it kind of shows that Jose and Dutch were a little bit over their heads in on this one and i just love the whole atmosphere of burning down the tobacco fields just amazing with all the fire going on it's just probably the best atmosphere in the entire game and i think this mission is one of the most consequential in the game as it really sets up the ambush on sean and the grays and really sets up the entire like all the vanderland gang members are dying during the game i think the assault during the mission is also just amazing as i think there's just a great setting. So overall, this has to be one of the best missions. And I just love the beautiful atmosphere of the entire thing. And it definitely has to go into S tier. In 11th place, I've got visiting hours from chapter six. I love the shootout during this mission, going from trying to negotiate John's release into a backtracking shootout off the island. It's pretty fun. And finally rescuing the third most important character in the entire game and John and Arthur's banter just makes this mission great. The ride back may even be my favorite part with just Arthur explaining all the troubles to John and John not even understanding how that actually happened because it's just so crazy that all these things happen in such a short time. And then the end of the mission really works to show Dutch's characters. He's finally breaking the morality of no man left behind and didn't want to rescue John until it actually fit his plan. Also Dutch saying that's going to bring more law down on them shows that he's a hypocrite because in the very next mission, he kills Cornwall. So overall, this mission is just amazing, amazing and has to go into S tier. 
In 10th place, I've got a simple social call from chapter six. This mission shows how far Dutch has gone off the rails, thinking that Cornwall would even think about letting them go after all the time and money he poured into the Pinkertons trying to get them killed. The show is also pretty solid progressing throughout the town of Annisburg, eventually going on a horseback back towards their camp. And the mission also shows that Micah has replaced Arthur as Dutch's second man with Micah and Dutch formulating the plan to get them out and Arthur kind of taking orders from Micah. I just think overall this one works really well. And while killing Cornwall in this way might be a little annoying, I feel like it is nice to like finally wrap up the loose end of Cornwall. And even while the Pinkertons are still chasing after you, you kind of wrap up the ending with Cornwall. So it's pretty solid. And I think this one definitely has to go into S tier. I just really love this mission. And I really love the fact that shows how far Dutch has gone off the rails. In ninth place, it has to be our best selves from chapter six. I love the bond between John and Arthur and how they're excited to go for that one last train as long as John and his family can get out of the gang safely. The mission itself is just kind of a pretty standard train heist. All those are pretty fun. They're or just a little bit more theatrics that like put them over the other ones with the Gatling gun and the carriage on fire. So that makes it a little bit more interesting than some of the other ones. John's fake death is pretty sad on the first time because like this is one of the biggest characters in the game and you kind of wanted to get him out safely. But on multiple replays, it kind of loses that same shock value and sadness value. It just proves that Dutch is following Micah's ideology of just being a survivor, black lung. It's also just a real warm up before the big ending with Red Dead Redemption. And I feel like because of that, it can't be that much higher, And it, but it definitely is still an S tier mission. In eighth place, it has to be a short walk in a pretty town from chapter three. I love this mission. I feel like it really sets off the whole game. Like the whole game doesn't really have any stakes until this mission. After fooling the Braithwaite's and Grays doesn't work, they really need to move on to these bigger and better targets in San Denis and they really need to keep going after those bigger targets and this mission also starts the real rift between Micah and Arthur and Bill as you can tell this is really where Arthur realized Micah doesn't care who dies as long as he's still alive and you also see that Arthur gets mad at Bill which kind of pushes him towards Micah's side and the mission itself is also pretty fun in the ending where Arthur looks back on Sean is always sad because he he realizes there are probably a lot more people that died. And, you know, while he was like an older brother to Sean and Sean was like an annoying little brother, they really did have a nice deep bond. And it's, you know, always sad to see one of your friends die. And Arthur kind of realized that there's going to be a lot more friends that would die if he doesn't, you know, kind of shape it up after here. So this one definitely has to go into S here. I just love this mission. In seventh place, I've got That's Murphy Country from Chapter 5. Arthur and Charles Bond really develops in this mission, especially when you go on the canoe, which takes a lot of time. You also get a solid shootout with the Murphy Brood with a great soundtrack in the cave, kind of liberating the cave for that final location. It's just really nice when you get like a kind of interesting, unique location. And then returning the child to her mother really shows Arthur's good side. It kind of foreshadows how he'll save the Downs after he sees Edith being a prostitute in uh annisburg and all kind of ends off with this big bang when molly comes in spilling her guts about ratting and i just love because when molly actually dies it doesn't really show dutch's turn because there have been other traitors and miss grimshaw is the one who actually kills her but the fact that molly does die there means that the gang is kind of turning on itself and you know there's a lot of character development with that because the, the gang just overall is turning on itself and eventually it's going to have to stop and clearly this shows like the downfall of the whole gang so this one definitely has to go in s tier i just love this mission in sixth place it has to be the king's son this one's also from chapter six and this mission just has one of the best atmospheres in the entire gang with the rain pouring down on arthur and charles and arthur kind of finally revealing himself to charles that he's going to die soon and charles being like no you're not and then he's like, okay, at least if you do know you're going to die, you know, do something, help some people out because you only have a certain amount of time left. At least you know that other people don't. And I just love that part. And just the whole gameplay of this mission is also amazing. We have a nice sneak into the fort before fighting your way out of the fort and then starting that horseback gunfight, which is pretty generic at this point. And then finally the canoe gunfight, which is really fun, especially when you fight back against the other people. I also love the fact that Arthur risked the little last bit of his life to save eagle flies for rains fall on this mission and then for it to be the exact opposite way in the next mission even though arthur doesn't really live long after that so this one definitely also has to go into s tier 
In fifth place, it has to be the Sheeps and the Goats from chapter two. This mission is just amazing from seeing the connection and that kind of broken bond between Arthur and John, where they're like, oh my God, you can't live two lives. And I think also that's some good foreshadowing where John's, you know, kind of is like, oh, he's asking about the whole rancher life and his dialogue with Arthur saying like, oh my God, you need to pick between one life or the other. And then eventually meeting up with Dutch and Strauss at the poor man's saloon with Strauss being kind of like the dirtiest member of the gang because he loans money to the poor people who are being taken advantage of uh, to Dutch, who's like the commander of the gang. And he doesn't really want to get the, the dirty stuff mixed with the clean stuff there. I don't know. It's really interesting. And you kind of see that Dutch changes into like nastier motives after this fact after this point where he's talking to Strauss. I don't really know if that's any foreshadowing here, but I think it's kind of interesting. Also the fact that like John tells, or Arthur tells John not to live two lives and just pick one really foreshadows, I mean, eventually becoming a rancher and doing all this stuff with his family. So I think this one is just really great foreshadowing with John's life and also just a fun mission where you fight your way out of there. I just think overall, one of the best missions in the entire game and has some good stuff, character building and you know some good gameplay as well. So it definitely has to be in S tier. In fourth place, it has to be Blood Feuds Ancient and Modern from Chapter 3. This has to be my favorite mission gameplay-wise. Just, I just love this mission. The sound design is amazing. As the player, you also just want to see Jack back alive and kill Catherine Braithwaite. So the whole gang comes in, guns blazing. I just love that whole part. It's just amazing when you actually go in and everyone's kind of, you know, forward trying to do one thing for the gang. And it's just also the fact that the majority of the fighting men of the Vanderlyn gang also go. And it shows that kind of the Vanderlyn gang at full strength can take out almost anything, even the rich family who hasn't had any troubles for 100 years. It's also a good turning point where their initial mistakes in Valentine's and Rhodes have kind of caught up to them and spiraled out of control because they've, you know, killed the whole Braithwaite family. They've done a lot of bad things to Cornwall and just all their mistakes are kind of piling up at this point. And I just think it's really great. And it kind of transitions perfectly into the San Denis thing where Jack eventually gets taken there. So this is just a really great mission. I think overall, it's just probably my most favorite one where you actually like come in, you're like, oh my God, I want to kill this woman. And I just think that that's great about it. So overall, it's a great, it's a great mission. Definitely has to be S here. In third place, it has to be Banking in American Art from Chapter 4. This is one of the best in the entire game. It has everything. Starting off with a nice ride in the town with John spreading his doubt like normal, being a kind of Debbie Downer. Everyone else is kind of happy, though, because Dutch has a plan. They're getting the money and then going to Tahiti, and then just all goes wrong. The distraction works well, but Jose is caught. And when the gang gets the money, Jose is shot right in front of them, resulting in probably the saddest death in the entire gang. You see the guy that is like really a father figure to Arthur getting gunned down right in front of him and like Dutch's best friend gets gunned down right in front of him showing how he kind of you know turns into this bad guy after that and then Arthur finally finds an escape but John Arthur's best friend is caught no and then Lenny is shot in front of Arthur so Arthur basically loses three of like the most important and his best friends in the entire gang in quick succession and then they eventually get out because Charles his next best friend in the gang also gets caught so he loses the four of them and you know eventually charles is realized that he didn't get caught but charles sacrificed himself at that point so it's like arthur loses john lenny hosea and charles in the same mission the the next person that you know you'd hate to die would be dutch but you're there and dutch is with the other most unbearable members and i just feel like it's such a big hit right here and it's like they got all this money and then it it eventually goes away at when the boat sinks. So it's just, it's such a great high here. And eventually like two minutes later, you get the worst lows because all those things, all those deaths mean absolutely nothing because the boat sank. In second place, it has to be my last boy from chapter six. The beginning of the mission is so sad seeing Eagle Fly's totally disregard his father, even though he knows it could be Eagle Fly's last time riding. I love how you've seen the lines that are drawn with Bill and Javier being on Dutch's side while Sadie and John are clearly against him. The fight scene is amazing with great music and I love the movement and transition within the mission from fighting on the planes to the bridges to the town and then in the factory itself. It kind of just all works amazingly and you have some nice flow throughout the entire mission for the gunfight. And then getting the money that Dutch sacrificed hundreds of people to get only for 
to be like a thousand dollars i think and then you see dutch leaving arthur because at this point he's really fallen for that same micah i'm a survivor black lung ideology and then eagle flies his sacrifice especially after dutch used him it's so sad to see and then him dying in his father's arm always saddens me overall this is just an amazing mission with so much depth and there's just such great gameplay and like the foreshadowing you see how dutch has become like basically micah at this point and you see eagle flies dying after the fact that i don't know it's just overall the great mission and you see dutch leaving arthur in there it just it's just amazing and definitely has to be an s tier mission and it's one of the best in the entire game if only there wasn't a better mission in first place that has to be red dead redemption from chapter six you see dutch leaving abigail because again he's just following micah's ideology of leaving everyone behind and just sticking to his own sin and being a survivor and then you finally get to confront Mr. Milton with Milton finally revealing that Micah was the one that was the rat and revealing that our favorite character was the rat the whole time. Abigail, the badass woman she is, gets the final blow, securing her and John's freedom by her own hand. And I love the fights throughout the mission. While they're a little generic on their own, there's five different types of gunfights with amazing emotional vulnerability throughout it. And they all work amazingly. There's a great song on the ride back to camp where you as a player get to relive some of your past experiences with Arthur right at the end of the game. Then you get to see how Micah has taken Dutch's spot as the pseudo leader of the camp. And you also get to see John come back and everyone else turn against the two of them except Miss Grimshaw, who's finally shot by Arthur. And then Arthur gets an amazing emotional goodbye with his horse, who finally right, dies right in front of him. You see some amazing scenes with John and Arthur, with Arthur helping John out and giving his hat to John, symbolizing the transfer of his life to John. Then you get a nice fun fight with Micah to end the game. And while it's not as satisfying as many people would have hoped, you can still put in a good beating on Micah, and then Dutch kind of eventually realizes Micah is the rat in the last scene, and actually kind of regrets his decisions, but at this point, there's nothing he can do to change it. And it all ends with the perfect ending, with Arthur facing the sunrise, symbolizing the people that will live on because of him. I feel like this has to be the perfect mission to end the game, and just overall is one of the best missions in any game ever. So this one has to go in S tier, and is the best mission in Red Dead Redemption 2. So that concludes my Red Dead Redemption 2 missions tier list. Let me know what you guys would change. And if you guys did get this way all the way to the end of this hour long video, please like this video and subscribe. This video took me a super long time to make and I'll be having a lot more videos like this. So please subscribe as we'll be making at least one of these for Red Dead Redemption 1.